I just want to say, I just want to say, I have a lot of things on my heart, but to stand up and really be clear and coherent. So I need your prayers on this because this is something I'm struggling with. Uh, I've got a lot of help and love around me, and uh, if if you're if you're kind of doing the dog tilt a little at some of the things I say, I promise I'll get better. So lots of room to grow. So last week I I read. Exodus 24, the, just a, a beautiful scene of the presence of God manifested having, having a, a communion dinner with, with people who were just in awe of what was going on, being brought out of Egypt. And uh, so I titled today, and really like what you said, Marion, because this is not a this is not an easy process. Uh, that it, when we're born again, we're born into Jesus, and when we're born into Jesus, we're born into a community, a, a, a common unity community. Um, and to really begin to unpack um, just what that really is and what it means to us. Um, the liberty and the love and the light and the truth and everything that we're designed to carry as as a as a gift as a status of being chosen and brought into this just the incredible privilege um, and so that's my heart how how do we do this and uh, how does that happen how does that happen and fire is a as a as a purifier, uh, it's really an accurate process description of how love really burns away the the focus on us as individuals. Just that inherent bent that we have that happened as a as, as a consequence of the fall, and and somebody said the other day tied that to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as the tree of the individual. And whether or not that's right, it's very helpful. Um, so we're, we're born into a household, a, f a family, that, that's huge. If you really think about all the people that have, have been gifted with this process and to be aware of that, and you're, you're part of that, uh, is is easy to forget in in day to day life and our circumstances, and I really think it's something that is. I'm starting to see this idea of being in Christ. I'm starting to hear other people kind of pull in this radio signal, and they're focused on this. And not only is it is it kind of coming, uh, other people are are hearing this, but there's some urgency to it, uh, which makes it even more um, significant to, to pay attention to this. And the history of this place, um, you know, it's easy to think of when Jesus says, I want you to pursue God with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind, really everything towards God. And, and then I want you to love others as yourself. It's, it's almost easy to see that as, you know, a secondary, you know, the loving others is almost a secondary consequence. But God will flip things and he'll start with the result or the consequence and he'll use it to point backwards to the root of where the, the, the real initiation of that result and, 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 you know, just thinking that works can, you know, if I go out and I do these things and I make these things happen, that there's really any value, um, you know, to, and, and so we're going to hear a little bit today about Paul, kind of, uh, I want to come out of the Old Testament into Christ now, but I don't want to leave it behind because grace was right there from the start. And the response to grace was that God said, this is how, in my grace, this is how you be with me. This is how I be with you. 
And, and through this, you are going to bless in the world, the nations, which he had just disinherited, in effect, two chapters earlier before he approached Abram. And, and so at Pentecost now, my spirit is going out and I'm, I'm, re, I'm regathering the nations that, that I turned from at the Tower of Babel and I've gone and I've created this nation and out of that my son will come and he will regather all of the nations. And so here's the thing I wanted, I've been thinking about this. So we've been studying Philippians in our Friday night Bible study and we're in chapter 3. And Paul's beginning to use himself as an example of somebody going through this process where his whole heart was for the body of Christ. His whole personal identity was completely in seeing Christ in the body. There was no individual left in him, and the process was one that he suffered through. But, but in that, he counted all of that gain and... and you know, this achievement, and this is what I want to point to. In Philippians 3, he's, he's talking about, watch out, look out. He starts to warn the church there. Look out for the dogs. Look out for the, the workers of, of evil. And look out for the mutilators of the flesh. And This is what Paul is saying. These people, not only do they not understand the Old Testament, they don't understand the New Testament, and you need to watch out for these people. So what I want to point out is Paul is seeing, I never understood the scriptures of the Old Testament until Jesus knocked me off my horse, and through his grace, I was able to look back and understand the heart of all of that. There's no discontinuity in, uh, in the Old Testament. Paul's coming from, he's a Pharisee of Pharisees and a Hebrew of Hebrews. And then he even says, and as to work, you know, after all of that, I'm blameless. A total misreading of the heart back at the mountain in Sinai when they're communing with God. All, all a, a, a moment of grace and God's love and communion. And, and it, he's promising them, if you live in this culture that I'm giving you, if you follow these instructions, I will bless you. It, it really wasn't even about salvation. It was just about learning about who God is. It's this beautiful thing that ends up getting turned into this vertical, elitist, individual thing um, where, you know, they think, Paul thinks he's doing God's work. And he's... He, you know, Jesus is in the temple and he's, he's calling them sons of disobedience, sons of the devil in the temple. It, it, things have gotten so off course. There's no interest in the original charter of blessing to bless the nations. And Jesus comes in the full manifestation of all of those promises. He's the king of kings. He's the father of faith. He's the full significance of Abraham who just believed he just believed forward. He saw, the, he saw the Messiah, David, as the king. The promise that, that someone will come through your line and will be the full significance, the full display of, of, of the king, of the human response to God. He, he, he's fleshing out all these things, and I talked a little bit last week about that. And so we come... And, and there's a phrase that's used in the Bible, it's the just shall live by faith. That's actually from the Old Testament. That's Habakkuk in the second chapter. And that phrase changed the world. That's the one that Martin Luther had this massive, you know, Jesus coming out of the desert and he says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So just that declaration What's inherent in that is a lot of what you carry is going to have to be removed to change your mind, to turn from where you are, all the suppositions that you carry about me. And so J Jesus comes and there's, there's three basic, there's three titles and, and one of them, he's the Messiah, but he didn't like using that term a lot because 
there wasn't a real understanding. The Messiah wasn't going to come and, you know, plunder the Gentiles and restore the kingdom of Israel. That's not what the Messiah... But that was their understanding of the Davidic king. And then the servant of God. So Isaiah is really all about that. If you read Isaiah, the servant of God, the servant of the Lord, the servant of Yahweh, because it's the L-O-R-D in capitals in your translations. It's the Father. <clears throat> and the suffering servant of Isaiah 53 is part of that. But they weren't clear that, that Messiah was going to come and die. And then the third one, the one that he really loved, was the Son of Man. He used that one a lot. And if you just look at that phrase, he's the Son of the Father. He's the Son of Man. He's fully God and fully man, that God has descended and taken our humanity, and he's lived a life that is truly blameless, inward and outward, and, and that through faith, through grace, that we can be born into him. And, and, and so that's the initial salvation, but really what I want to talk about today more is being in Christ. How do we walk in Christ? What, what are the aspects of that? And ultimately, it just brings you to a point where you see something that you, we just can't do it. We, just, we get to a point, how, how does the individual die? And it's one thing to know the truth about the Lord, but to surrender to that, to actually come under that, and to willingly trust him with this, um, is, is, a, is the thing I really want to focus on. And he says, in me, ask, and I will give it to you. So I really think as a community that is trying to, dis to discover, like, how, how do we do this? How do we do this and protect each other in, in, in this process to where there, there's boundaries that protect us in learning about how to do this? As a, as a group here, to ask, Lord, show us how to do this. So I want to just listen a little bit to some of the scripture in, in this context. heard all my life people say, um, and even in the Christian community lately, that we're all children of God. That because God created us, we're children of God. Well, that's, that's not quite what Scripture says. Um, and I want to tie this to, if you're not a child, then you can't enter the kingdom. You enter the kingdom as a child. So I want to put those two together. So this is John, right out of the gate, chapter 1. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So that is, is, a, that is a status that he has given the people who are born again. That the Father has drawn to His Son as a gift so that we can enter into Him. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, unless you repent and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That's the child that enters into the kingdom. The born again. When we're born again, we're babies. We need care. Just He just uses the natural analogy. We need the milk of the word. We need community. We need parents. We, we need a lot of things. We don't have a voice. We're not able to really express or stand in anything in any way. And we grow. And we're surrounded by people who spiritually can, can steward that process. 
we, we might call them leaders, but, but they're life givers. They're, they're, they're not people that stand out as leading from the front. They're, there's a, this is what the Lord says, that's not, that's not how we do it. We, we, we get in and we get under people as servants. We're still, we're still sons and daughters, but we serve. Power serves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, giving him the, um, this is my paraphrase, giving him the desire to come, and I will raise him from the dead on the last day which is just a completion of salvation, including the body, that all of that corruption is overcome and that all of that promise in community and family comes to earth. It comes here. All of creation is redeemed. So not only are we redeemed, but we, li- we are then brought, the kingdom comes in a redeemed creation. This is the scope of the gospel. This is the, this is the promise. This is, this is what we're actually living for. And, and faith drawing from a realm of eternity outside of any past, present, or future. And, and God's using sight. If you can see and understand this, you can, you can draw it into your day, into your circumstance. There, there's a power in that, not, in an, not as an individual, but to care for others. But the whole point of the second great commandment is that's the result. That's the direction it goes. You come through me. And, and in no way am I trying to say that this is not personal. It's extremely personal. There's nothing more personal. I am not diminishing that. But as an individual and where my focus is, I grow and I start to have a voice. And, and just like maybe a, a 18 or 19 year old, you know, I'm, I'm all voice. So Jesus is 12 years old. He's the smartest person in the temple. And the father just says, no, you you have to go home. There's more for you to learn in, in stewarding your family. And I'm sure the father knows that Joseph is not going to be around. And Jesus has to live through these circumstances for 18 more years before he's released. So I just want to get an appreciation for you know, our, our circumstances. For, for me, I, I, I said this last week, you know, you can t- you can see rebellion and and pride, and you can see all these characteristics, but but when I started to see the word, you know, kind of implicitly this this idea of the individual, that's what has to fall into the soil and die. That's the outer husk of the wheat, and so Paul is trying to teach these people that that this is this is where you need to go. This is the original charter from the Old Testament to love others and to bless the nation and to end up in the family of God. And so, so it's big and, it, and it's impossible, but that's, that's what we're called to press into. And, and in that, there is care and steward, uh, uh, getting underneath each other, seeing each other, seeing Christ in a community, just that would be incredible to just wake up one day and and just to be able to see the body of Christ and see Jesus in that so strongly that you're that you're willing to do anything to to be a part of that. I'm I'm just talking within the community now, not a evangelistic type of thing where you're going out in the world. But in that family, in, in that identification in, uh, in others, in the body, there, there is a liberty and a strength that can enable you to go out and approach people, which is the, the ancient original charter from God to humanity. So Jesus is this son of man. He's fully God and fully, he, he's, he's coming into the exact same flesh with all of those temptations and opportunities. And he lives his life and redeems himself through, through being one with the Father and completely carried by the Holy Spirit. And that, you know, he, he comes into the room for the first time after he's died. And these guys are terrified and confused. And he comes into the room. And the first thing he says is, as the Father sent me, I send you. And he breathes on them. And for the first time, humanity 
experiences that, that passage um, in, into him. And they're able to go out and pour themselves out in a way where even their life is, is all the way, they, they, they actually follow the path that Jesus showed them personally. And so how, how, do, we, how do we do that? We live in a world where it's all about the individual. Um, uh, we value things that seem really noble about uh, achievement and things like that. But what is the word not only saying, but it's promising that if you come and you enter into my word, if you, how you treat that is how you're treating me. And the, the word is sufficient to equip you for this passage. It, it, if you approach it with a humble heart and in prayer, I will give you the understanding and you will ask me, you will come to me in desperate need. How do I do this? How do I become that identified with you? That, that I'm all in for the body of Christ. And so these verses that if you try and save yourself, you'll lose yourself. And there's a bunch of them, and I just brought a few. But this is the context. <clears throat> Therefore, any of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Okay. Yeah, he comes to the rich young guy and says, give everything away. But that's not what he's really saying. He's saying that to the guy because he knows his whole identity is tied to that. What he's really asking him is, you need to be able to give your, what you think is you, you need to give that up. And I will give you in return something far greater. I, is, th these verses, this is, this is what he's actually this is what the context of what he's saying. And at the, at the end of his time, um, it's almost like I, I, I want you to do what I've, you know, the, look, look at the, the Great Commission. It's not like you need to like get on a jet and go to Thailand or something. I mean, bless your heart if you're called to that. But, but go means, okay, I want, you, I want you faced outward in the world in, in, this, um, in this state of being a mature daughter and son, you're all in for that. And if you're not, you won't, you won't even make it through your first two years. I've seen, I've, I've visited missionaries that were so dry. All they could do is pretty much sit around and cry, like s s a little village in the middle of Turkey, right? She's probably the only Christian within a couple hundred miles. She's been there seven years with this family. And she's so dry, all she can do is just, would you just, pray, just pour some water on me? I'm so dry. And, and just, that's really kind of where we are in our day-to-day -day Christian walk. That would, that would be something that maybe all of us are, are kind of doing. But... These impossible things are things we tend to, to shy away from. We reduce ourselves away from them because we look at that and we go, that's, that's impossible, and we find some other way to walk with whatever we can carry. And I want to open this up just as, as a possibility that this is, this is what he's asking us to do, and we won't know how to do it, but we can together ask, you, you need to come, Lord, and show us how this happens and it's going to be messy and there's going to be some suffering in it and this is what paul is saying in in uh, philippians in the beginning of the chapter I, I suffered but i count it as gain because once i entered in and i actually saw what this is and experienced the love and the liberty in the lord it's like he's just rushing out trying to get this across come Come and understand this. And maybe at first it is just the leaders. But the whole point of the leaders are to be seeds and go back and actually feed the community. That's your whole purpose. It's not for empire building or to stand out or any of that. It's not to have a big internet ministry. None of that. It's right in your community. It's like right here with, with you. You guys are the only community I know in Nelson. I, I know some other people 
I would include them in that, but there's no other option. There's no other option. This is what brought me back to the junction. Once I started to get this and start to see it, and, I, and he's pointing me at it, and I, no, and this is the fire. Like, I don't, look, I want you to go back, and I want you to start talking about what I'm showing you. Not, not in a definitive, this is, this is how it is, but I want you to present this picture in front of the people, and, uh, and I will do the rest. So that's what I'm trying to do. And uh, that, that's my heart for the last three or four times. Um, I'm, after I talk today, I'm gonna take a little time off and I'm gonna look at and listen to how to do this clearer and, and more coherency and to try and be more helpful in doing that. And maybe I'll come back in October and I'd really like to read through the book of Colossians, which is the supremacy of Jesus. And I'd love to have that. I really miss that in this place, just reading through a book and just having us all soak in it was some, yeah, it's just, it was one of the best things that I, that was here when I first came was that I will, that was done well at that time. And so I'd, I'd like to try and do that and start to, sh let's look at this because a good question, the right question is more valuable than a hundred half answers. If we can just see something where he's leading us, trust me, trust me. It will be intensely personal. It will be messy. But if we just can pick ourselves up in grace and forgiveness and just sit down and try and, and, try and go through this and lean on him and be in the word. And this is something personal, not just here, but a devotional life away from here. To, to be able to hook, be, be hooked by the Lord and, and not, you know, just to wake up and just, that's what you want. That's what I, I need. To, I need to like be in this. I can't not be in that. At that point, you're teachable. And, and that's been my experience the last few years. Yeah. I protest, brothers, by my pride in you. He's all in, which I have, and this is Paul, which I have in Christ. I die every day. He has to battle every day against the individual. It will not go away until we are fully glorified in the body. We, we're just going to carry. You're removed from the penalty and the, and the consequence, but you're not removed from the presence of, of that, of the darkness, of that corruption. It's a constant walk. But he's saying in, in Philippians, it's a walk in joy. It's a walk in joy and wonder. Yes, this removal is not a lot of fun, but I walk in joy. And he's telling them, imitate me. I, there's nobody else in the word that's, that can stand forward and say, I'm a mature son. This has been stripped away from me. And these uh, uh, Timothy and Epaphroditus, same with them. And that's why I'm sending them to you because they're an example of what it looks like to actually breathe life into the nations and into the body. And, and that's, that's, that's God's heart. I think it was Henry Blackaby rolled through this church. There was some teaching some years ago. Uh, Chris, you, you remember that. And, and, and that was the picture he gave, is that being invited into the larger work of God. And, and that's kind of what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pulling that picture back that the freedom and liberty is in that. It's, it's not in having certain things happen in your life. It's certainly not a prayer for an easier life. It's the prayer to stand in that family so strongly that you can, you can walk into the center of any circumstance. And that, that's what Paul is saying in his ministry. I can be all things in all circumstances. I, he has equipped me to do this. And he, this is what he's trying to set in place. Is, is, that, am I, is that clear? Am, am, am I, it, it's a bit of a, you know, a reminder like, oh yeah, that's, this, is, this is the whole purpose of redemption is to go out and gather into the original physical uh, commission to go be fruitful and multiply. This is the spiritual, this is the spiritual go forth, build my family. My, my sacraments are the baptism to the one-time baptism of surrendering in a in a in a formal way into my death and resurrection and 
the Lord's Supper is the, identif the identification through his body and blood that I am in, the, I'm in Christ. I'm in his body. And this is what Jesus is asking us, abide in me. When he says that, he means the family. It's a corporate, it's a corporate address. And you need to learn how to see it and see me in it. And that's what I want you to, to receive your identity with. So I, I said last week, doesn't matter what you are. And it's not for Paul, it was high achievement that was removed and he counted that as gain. But what if you're not, what if you have nothing? What if you've been abused and marginalized and you've had nothing really happen right in your life? And that's the promise. I will strip that away and I will give you something so pure and so much better than that. And that's, that's the promise. And you could never want it and you could never do this in your own strength. And that is the good news. And the bad news is the whole history, the whole narrative of God trying to figure this out, trying to do this, trying to approach upward towards God. And the good news in the light yoke is you don't have to do that. I did it. And I want you in me. And so in Christ, in, in a walk, is it's his work. We, there's two things that my talks have addressed. One is, God says, my word is my breath. I, it is my speech act of creation. And I want you to treat my word like me. In everyday life, it's like, well, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. I'm tired of listening to talk. It's completely antithetical. You can't just switch a channel from having this kind of burnout, cynical view of talk and then open up the Bible and go, oh, this, this is God's word and it's the power, God's present as it, if I'm in this word, I'm in his creative act through his speaking. It's, it's, so there's, there's outward things that, just, that, just heart, that can harden us. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, here it is, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. That, that's God's purpose. So here's Paul talking. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. His, his individual identity has been displaced in Christ. But Christ lives in me. So we live in Christ. We were talking about this last night. We live in Christ and he lives in us. So what are the different aspects of that? And that in Christ, we become one flesh with him. And he lives in us. And this is the prayer. If you read John 17, he's talking to the Father. And he's talking about this, about them being in me and you being in me and you being in them. And it's, it's, it's the family of the Trinity. This is this... Uh, this permeating influence and, and relationship with each other. That's what we're called to, to be, ultimately. And we should know the end from the beginning. Even if we don't understand it, that's, that's the call. That's, that's what he's drawing us towards. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of my surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus. For his sake... I have suffered the loss of all things. It hurt. The fire is not pleasant. But in God's love, in God's love, and this is really the power, you can confront in love. If, if I know somebody and I love them, there can be a high degree of confrontation. And in that love, you can do that. And that's what Jesus did when he walked in his ministry. He his grace just came out of his mouth whenever he spoke. There was so much love and he could just say things to people directly right to the point like a knife. And that's what that love does. That's, that's, the, that's the do all things in love for that very reason because the whole program is, is a, not only a process of bringing you into the presence and to be able to image God, but to, to reduce the, you know, the, do, do what thou wilt is the s satanic declaration of individuals. And, and he came to kill that and we're not to tolerate what he came to kill. 
And so if we're thinking of missions and, and you've, you've done outreach, you know, what is, what is my mission? And really God will answer that by saying, well, first I want you to see what kind of me you have to be in order for me to send you. Because otherwise you'll just duplicate yourself. Just go out and... This is from Ephesians. It's a little long, but... Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in Christ. Once you see this phrase, it's just everywhere. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Not, n not for any other reason, you know, in Romans, Paul says, don't even ask why he chose you. Don't do it. It's not because of anything he saw in you. It's not because he saw you accepting him. It's none of that. It's, it's just for his own pleasure. It's, it's a mystery. And I have to be careful with that word because in the Bible, a mystery is something that is now revealed that wasn't. It's, it's not something that stays hidden. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself. He, he gave us the right to be children of God as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise and his glorious grace, which he has blessed us in the beloved. Now, I said I'd read some verses from Ephesians, and maybe I'll move towards finishing here with this. I, I highlighted in Christ, in him, and grace. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purposes, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were first to hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of your inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. I, I think I think I'll just leave I'll just leave it there. I, I don't know if there's a high degree of application. It's just a picture of wonder that this is this is really what it's all for. And and so as we as we have more time together as 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 in our personal devotional life that that we're members of a huge family. When, when the kingdom comes and you, may, you meet uh, 10 generations of your family, it's, it, it's a, a huge amount of people. And, and this, is our, this is our heritage. And we're all in Christ. That that's the one flesh that we... The kingdom is actually in Christ. He is the Son that gives us access to the Father and into the Holy Family of, of the Trinity. And sometimes we just need to hear the big picture to, to remember what all of this is for. And so how do we go through the removal um, of this individual? And, and really what I've said so far in the last few weeks is trust, trust the word. Because not only the picture, but the promises and uh, the guarantee is through God's actual word, which he is saying in the word, this is, this is where you go. And there's prayer and the sacraments and um, uh, communion is such a powerful thing. There's so many things that can be said about wh what that gift to us is. It's not just us declaring loyalty. There's, so there's a lot of room for there's a lot of room for growth, and it's helpful to say the least. And so I just come up today 
and just put this before you. Why, why don't we learn and surrender and see if we can have a breakthrough? Because if real community can come here and, and that can actually display itself, it, it, it's, it's going to be really powerful. And so that's the promise, and I'm standing on it. So I just bless all of you. I'll just end with a prayer. F Father, just show us. Show us what you're talking about. Would you come and give us the big picture and the glory and the wonder and the liberty, joy and love and all the fruits of the Spirit and learning to be and walk and belong to your body in your Son, Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Teach us, Lord. Make us humble. In Jesus' name. Amen.